Welcome back to Watching Film with Seth Varnador. Uh, this week we're playing a little hurt. Uh, the, the computer I normally use to record games and do these videos is in the shop right now. Uh, I think the Alabama game killed it. So hopefully it comes back this next week. But for this week, still wanted to get something out. So we're going to go and just basically had to grab the highlights off YouTube. Uh, and so we'll, we'll kind of, it's going to be a little bit shorter, not quite as in depth as normal, but still some good stuff. I thought Florida was pretty vanilla again on both sides of the ball, not too much for this game. They've kind of even said as much in the post game talking about it. So they rested some guys, that kind of stuff. So we'll take a look at the Florida defense first, then end with the offense and then kind of do some general thoughts on the game. So. Why is Tennessee why, – why did Florida have trouble with Tennessee? I, I think it's just kind of this Heupel, Josh Heupel offense. It's really hard to defend. You see how wide the outside receivers are, and you kind of split the difference with number two. It causes some problems for really anybody on defense because it, it, unless you're playing straight man coverage, you got to widen people out of the box. So now you've got basically a 4-1 box functionally, four down, one linebacker, with five offensive linemen plus one running back that can block. So here, and then you couple that with – you can run some kind of RPO stuff here with this. And now you really put the defense in a bind right here. So I've got to go out to cover this. I'm sure if he would have – Flown inside for the run, they would have thrown that speed out right there. But he didn't, and now I got a lead blocker coming through here. And that's just using space and making you defend, right? You hear a lot of offensive coaches say in a, in a cliche way, make them defend every blade of grass. Well, this offense really does it. They, they stretch you so wide horizontally, and they go so fast that you've got to be really on top of things. Here, just use a little movement, and they're going to kind of insert here on an ISO. You got a little, looks like a double team there. Insert. Good cut by the back. You'll see Florida use the same insert ISO uh, for a nice gain of themselves later. But this motion kind of gets safeties roll down. He's going to roll over the top. He's kind of playing the motion a little bit. Then you get that insert on him. Good cut by the back. Pretty good block downfield by the receiver. And that's where you get that play here. Where you want to get every offense is the third and eight. You can't see, but there's a receiver way up there on the sideline. Really, really wide. So you got your star right here on this receiver. He's going to come inside to crack. He's going to follow, and that kind of takes him out of the play. But you kind of get what you want, really if you're Florida defensively. Not perfect, but pretty good. You're showing blitz. If you brought this out, blitz this play, you know, it hits for a touchdown anyways, but it would have been wide open there. So I think Tennessee thinks they catch him in one right here. But if I pause it right here, he wants to come crack down here. He's not going to get there. If I pause it right there, I, I think you've got to feel like you're in pretty decent shape for Florida. You think you can get underneath that block right there. He's kind of looking outside. So if I can get underneath that, I can make a tackle for no gain or maybe a loss of one. You're not in bad position right here. You miss the tackle. Then you got a chance to kind of make it. You get off the block there. You got a chance to make another tackle. Miss it, and that's how big plays happen. This is the SEC. Everybody's got good skill, guys. So if you miss tackles in space, teams are going to make you play, uh, pay. So, you know, that's not anything, you know, that's schematically you're not in a bad spot there. So the other touchdown of the first half, let's look at it. So what, first of all, you see how wide they are. Look how wide they are to the wide side of the field. So you've got your number two receiver is on the top of the numbers. A lot of teams will align their number one receiver there, depending on his route. So your number two receiver is on top of the numbers. So your safety is shading a little bit more to the side. Not only is that the field side, but look how wide these two guys are. Right? You're going to bring a blitz off here. So you, you want to play man coverage against this team. Well, here it is. He's coming off like he blocks. A lot of times in this look, this stack look, he'll just turn and run like a now screen. 
So he's thinking, kind of playing that now screen, I believe. He doesn't show it real hard here. He kind of stutters for a second like he's going to come back to it, and then he takes off. The safety here kind of loses eye discipline. Are you here? That's a nice like uh, catchphrase there. But he peeks inside right there for some reason. He's kind of – it looks like he thinks that they're th- – by the time he's – right now he's thinking that's – okay, now screen. He turns his head. Well, this guy never really stops. He kind of just shuffled for a second. He's thinking it's the now screen, so he's got eyes on the quarterback waiting for him to throw it. And then by the time he looks back up, oh, no. It was not the now screen. And now you can't catch up because, like I said, these are SEC skill guys. You just let them run by you. You're not going to catch them. Everybody's got pretty good ones in the SEC. Almost get there with a blitz. But you can see it's just kind of this false step right here. And thinking, okay, when's he going to throw this screen? And then, oh, no, he hasn't thrown it yet. What's going on? And then he realizes it's just a little too late. Shot over the top. But that, that's kind of if – you, if you don't play – just a little eye violation right there, right? Don't really need to peek in the backfield, especially if it's man coverage. Don't need to peek. Just stay on him. You get that shot at the top, and those guys are not going to be easy to catch. So what can you do? It looks like Florida might be running maybe like a – they're running a middle of the field close, one high look here. Everybody underneath looks like they're playing man, so it could be one – like a one robber, one rat type look. It's hard to tell. He's pedaling, but he's not really getting ground. He's, I think he might be looking to cut something coming across here. But if you're able to get pressure here, so Florida doesn't bring five. They've got – looks like you maybe have one for the back, one for the quarterback here with three. But they're able to get pressure with those three, get the quarterback to pull his eyes down. Obviously, the bad snap doesn't, uh, doesn't help Tennessee here. It helps the Gators. But pretty good coverage here. If you want these – these deep routes to develop. It takes time, but you push the pocket. He's got to pull his eyes down. If he was had a clean pocket, maybe he's able to hit that out there, but he doesn't. And you're able to get a sack on third down and get off the field. So being able to get pressure up front against this offense is really important. So right here, it's the, it's towards the end of the half, but just to another, another way to look at why does this offense give people problems? Just look at, Again, the receivers, how wide they are. He's got to he's got to vacate the box a little bit. So if, again, functionally, that's a four-one box. I got a five-man box. They've got five offensive linemen, but so it's even, right? But when you read somebody, they basically block him with a quarterback because they're reading him. So now we've got five on four, and that's just simple math. Five on four, nobody for the back. It's going to pick up yards. This offense is designed to pick up yards. It's it's a well-designed offense with this pace and scheme they play. If, you, if you're not able to get pressure on the quarterback, they can really pick you apart because everything, you know, down the field and when it's really wide, when you really stretch people out, it turns everything into kind of one-on-ones. Even if you're playing zone deep enough, everything turns into a one-on-one. So it really stretches you thin and forces you to win a lot of matchups if you can't pressure the quarterback. And then if you try to help in the back end by playing more zone stuff, then you're going to open yourself up in the running game because you leave light boxes to easily run into. Here again, you want to play man. Okay, great. Nice little rub concept, but since it wasn't this defender trying to get to the ball, I guess they don't call it. They could call it blocking downfield which I think is what Dan Mullen was asking for when, as he was kind of complaining about this call here during the game. It definitely looks like a block, but it's just – it's hard. That's a hard concept to pass off. You know, you're playing man coverage, it's tough. It's a tough look, and if the quarterback can make accurate throws and the receivers catch the ball, they're tough to stop. But Florida did a good job getting pressure – You see right here, getting pressure with four, beating the double team, making the quarterback pull his eyes down because this this offense is kind of predicated a lot of times on deeper vertical throws down the field. So if you don't let that guy get that kind of time, you can collapse the pocket. 
you can disrupt them a lot on offense. Florida's doing a pretty good job of that this year, get, collapsing those pockets, making it tough. Last week you played a really good quarterback that was able to make throws under that pressure. Most guys are going to be like this where they pull the ball down and you're able to rally for a sack. So let's talk about the offense now. I thought the offense didn't do anything schematically really drastic, nothing too different than normal. But I, I thought you saw more encouraging signs from Emory Jones that he's kind of settling into this position a lot better than he was a few weeks ago. To me, that was always the issue with Emory. It wasn't an issue of skill. He's got a lot of physical talent and can make you know, every throw you really want to make and obviously has the other traits of athleticism. But he seemed to be pressing, and I think it was to kind of match – the otherworldly stuff being done by Anthony Richardson, right? You see a guy as big as Richardson come out, run 20 some odd miles an hour down the field for a 75 yard touchdown run. You maybe want to press a little bit and make a spectacular play yourself instead of just making the right play. The last two weeks with no threat of Richardson coming in the game, I feel like Emory's kind of settled down into saying, okay, I'm just going to make the right play. I don't need to be spectacular. I'll just con consistently make the right play. And through that, that'll lead to spectacular results. So like here, first play of the game on offense, maybe I could force something in there, but he doesn't. He takes off, picks up 12 yards. You know, maybe just think back to the USF game, FAU game, where he forces some balls into places and he's late with them. Instead of just taking what the defense gives you, all right, they're going to fall underneath the pass. Take off, get yourself 12 on first down. That's another first down. Move the chains and kind of keep the offense moving down the field. Again, like I said, not as in-depth here, so a lot of highlights, but you're going to see shorter motion across here. Looks like they're going to run mesh, which is great in this low red zone area. I think shorter is going to be the guy over the ball. If they're playing man coverage, it's tough to pass all this off. Somebody's going to pop open. And what happens here is you got the linebacker matching the back there. That's a tough thing to match across when the back's going to run a wheel here. You got to run through a lot of traffic. Then you'll notice something that Emory does here. Here it is kind of drawn up again with all the other notation taken off, right? He's got to match the back. Can he get there? Right? We got both these guys. He's coming across here. He's coming across there. One of them might pop open. Emory does a good job just dropping to the back, making this guy fight through traffic. But what I don't think um, you know, gets enough credit here from Emory is look how he understands kind of obviously he knows he has a good play right here. He knows right now with this motion across, right, he followed shorter across the formation, right, shorter motion from there. He came back. He followed him across. He knows he's got man. Great. So he knows that this back is probably going to spring wide open. He also knows I got a free rusher right here, so I got to buy myself a little bit of time. If he just sits where he catches the snap here, he might he might get hit. You see him kind of run away from the pressure, then set his feet, make the decision to throw here. He doesn't just sit statically. He understands that I've got pressure coming off this backside here. Right, If he just stays right here and tries to wait for this thing to happen, he's going to get hit. He, he moves, avoids it, drops it off there. There's the guy supposed to be covering the back, got caught up in the traffic. Easy touchdown, but again, this is good stuff from Emory. Understanding where my protection is right here. Understanding that I might have some a free runner, and if I do, I know I've got a touchdown, so I've got to move to give myself time to make this throw. And he does for an easy touchdown there. All right, so we got a little outside wide zone here by Florida. Nub tied in, so tied in by himself down here. Three receivers up top. Make them match that numbers-wise. If you don't match it, we're going to throw it out there. Wide zone, so you're pushing wide until you can stick your foot in the ground and get vertical. Good job there by Pierce, and now you see a good job collapsing 
the line of scrimmage down here. So let's watch right here. Watch how we get a good push right there from Ethan White. They collapse down the line of scrimmage there. Look at the kind of wall that's being created right there. They're collapsing this. And then White is able to get off to the second level as the center overtakes. Really good job. Pierce runs hard through the hole there. Nice gain there on the outside zone. Really good stuff. And a lot of that is just with that backside pushing that thing down and opening up that backside for the running back to get vertical. So here, this is another good play by Emory here. Tennessee catches Florida with a pretty good blitz. So right here, you got four to this side, so they're going to check the protection this way. Florida does. So we check the protection this way. So right here, ball snapped. You see I'm kind of sliding. Everybody's sliding this way, right? This D tackle is going to come across the guard's face. You see he's coming across the center's face, occupying him. So they're using these two to occupy both guards in the center. And then they're going to wrap this backer around. He's big on big backside, so he's occupied. So you get a free rusher here. Emory does a great job of recognizing that, pulling the ball down, and taking off. Again, understanding right here where the protection, where the issue might be. Understand, seeing you got a free rusher, recognizing that, pulling the ball down, taking off, getting yourself out of a bad play, and, and, and still getting like a 12-yard run on first down. These are the things that you want him to do. Just take what they give you. If they, if they bring that, take off. It's okay to take off. You don't got to sit in the pocket. If they're if they got a free rusher, take off. This is one that ends up in a sack here, but I thought this this is I may be the only person that says this sack is a really good play. But Tennessee's got a blitz on here where they're gonna bring it from the corner here or uh, from the slot corner, right? On top of shorter here. They're gonna slant across and then drop this in. They're gonna try to get Emory to throw ball to this end here, right? Whittemore's coming across. It looks like they're all rushing, hopefully to trigger some kind of hot route. You see he's backing off. Sure, Emory, it's hot. You're hot. Throw it right here. Throw it, please throw it to Whittemore coming across. Meanwhile, they've dropped this defensive end back into play, and he's just waiting. He wants Emory to throw that so he, he can either light up Whittemore or pick it off, right? You see Emory kind of sees it, and right here you'd hope oh, he would just take off and run. He maybe holds the ball a second too long. You see, oh, now he realizes it, but he knows that he can't force that ball right there. You can kind of see his eyes, right? They're bringing it. He drops out. There's Whittemore coming across. He's eyeing it. He wants to. Th he, he kind of thinks about throwing, right? His hands separate, and then he sees that. Emory of a couple weeks ago maybe tries to fit it in there or maybe doesn't see this guy like like the uh, first pick he threw at USF, didn't really even see the guy, wasn't seeing it well. So he wants to throw it there, but he doesn't. He pulls it down. Now, obviously, he'd like for him to take off a little sooner, but he doesn't force the ball in for an interception. He tries to take off instead of force it in there, which I think is growth, right? If Florida doesn't turn the ball over, they're going to be tough to beat, right, as the year goes on. So that's a good play, even though it's a sack in my book. Maybe not in everybody else's, but in my book, a good play. So Tennessee looks like they're going to run kind of a three deep uh, middle of the field close look here. So Florida is going to run kind of four verts out of an interesting formation. So they got the bunch here. The, the running back is actually out wider. And you got your tight end down here. So you've got a four verts concept. If it's middle of the field safety, you're really kind of reading – Right, if he stays in the middle field, you're really reading. This is ends up being Henderson right here down the hash, shorter coming across to the opposite hash. So you're kind of making the safety choose between these two, and then if they all fall back, you'll have Wells sitting here underneath, right? So make the safety decide. So right here, it looks like you could maybe get shorter, but he's looking right here to see where the eyes are. 
it's hard to see where the safety is. Is the safety kind of starting to shade towards shorter? He might be. Right. And I, I'm, I'm assuming when the ball's thrown that he is. So Emory sees these guys break down on this. He's already started his throw. You see that they just broke on this. He's already started his throw. Good job anticipating it. Again, it's hard to tell their safety is if the safety is really shaded close to this, maybe you could have gotten shorter there. But again, it's hard to say because the ball's been in the air for a little bit and the safety is getting over the top. Obviously, he's not close to getting to the route. Emory does a good job of kind of holding up the receiver as well here, not leading him into getting a kill shot. Holds him up. Nice throw. Picks up a big gain for a big first down here. So Florida has done a bunch of stuff with – you see they're, we're gonna, they're going to go insert ISO here. Really good job, and you'll, you'll see it really good from the back here in a second. But they do a lot of things with, with this off tight end, right, this kind of wing tight end. They'll bring him across – and he'll bluff, he'll, or he'll, uh, on split zone, he'll kick out the end man. And then later in the game, you'll see this. They'll bring him across like he's going to kick out the end man. He'll leave him bluff, call that a bluff, where he, and then go to the second level. And then here, they're actually going to insert him. So we're going to get a nice double team here, there, one on there, one on there. Double team here to this backer iso in this backer and naquan Wright does a great job setting this up so really good double team right here pushing this guy into his lap gamble's coming to iso on him naquan Wright does a great job setting this up by pressing the hole and then a great job once he gets in the second level but watch it from this view here Great double team. Great double team. He's on man on man right there. He's coming for this. Watch Naquan right right here. He presses the hole, gets him to step up. So Naquan right basically the way he pressed this double team, got this backer to step up, and now he's going to cut off a gamble for the touchdown. So great execution up front. And then a really good job here by Naquan Wright getting that linebacker to step up and then cutting off a good block by Kamori Gamble for a touchdown. Here's the fumble right here. So these guys are going to sell. We're going to sell block out here. Motion him out. Obviously, we're selling quarterback run. And then if not quarterback run, throw in this little flare out of the back. So he's going to sell block, get lost in here. Sell block, get lost behind him. The corner here tries to jump up on the back. So this is a good job here by Emery. Right, he sees right here, the corner's jumped up for the back. That's going to allow Clo Copeland to slip behind here. Drops it down to Copeland. Right here, I thought his progress was stalled, but hey, good play by Tennessee to rip at the ball. Anytime you got a guy held up, rip at the ball. Uh, kills a scoring opportunity for Florida. They could have put this game away a little bit earlier, uh, but the Gators do a pretty good job coming back from it. But good concept right here on fourth down, and good job recognizing the corner, trying to jump this, and then dropping the ball over the corner's head in front of the safety in a small window there. Very nicely done there. Just got to hold on to that ball at the end. So right here, corners rolled up. Take a shot, right? Florida looks like they got power, some kind of power called. Looks like we're down, down. He's pulling around. I think this is all packaged up. So he's automatically running the go no matter what, you know, on the power. Looks like Whittemore is coming in, going to be coming in from the backside here on some type of slant or in-breaking route from off screen here. Down, down, down. Emory, I think, sees the corner rolled up and decides I'm going to take a shot pre-snap. Good decision. Good throw to start off the drive right here. Or on first down, rather. I think this was uh, after, after first down. But good decision on first down here. Just take your shot with a rolled up corner. 
Again, I think this is all package package preplay. You also see his safeties rolled down here. Safety has not rotated to the middle of the field yet, so you've got a lot of room for the one on one, right? He has not gotten to the middle of the field, so you have room over there. He's gonna have to really get on his horse to get there. And you see how the safety never really makes an impact. So good job recognizing the one-on-one -on -one and taking the shot down the field. Here you've got the Kodak play here. You've got a wing tight end here. You've got a motion to a stacked alignment. Tennessee's not quite sure what to do on the stacked alignment. You don't see you see they don't really attack. Shorter is going to block. Nobody really attacks the throw, and they by the time they do, Gamble slips behind them for an easy touchdown. Always great to cash in on these trick plays when you call them. You call them, you think they're going to be open when you call them, so you want to execute. Good execution, good quick throw here by Whittemore. And good catch kind of in a little bit of a crowd there at the end by the time the ball gets down to him by Gamble. So really well, well designed play, good timing on the call and great execution there. So Mullen has talked a couple of times about wanting to or or kind of understanding how to call a game for Emory. It's something new for him. Uh, right. Emory's just starting this year. So one thing they've started to do is roll the pocket a little bit more and let Emory throw on the run. I think that's why you're seeing them go under center more too. I would guess I – didn't, I haven't tracked it, but I would guess they've been under center already more times this year than they were last year. And, and so you're going to roll them out. You've got kind of the outside guy running a bit of a snag. I believe they hit Copeland on this last week against Alabama. Uh, Emory did on the run where he kind of throws it back against his body a little bit. It's hard to tell with the camera angle, but I believe – you're going to get shorter, running some type of vertical, almost clearing it out. But obviously, if if you, you can take that shot too, it may be a corner out. It's hard to tell. And then it looks like a deep sail. So, again, it could be like a deep corner out there. It's hard to tell with the TV camera angle. Roll him out. There's Henderson. He had the, uh, That's the one I think he did to Copeland last week. Emory's on the run. He gets some play to Henderson there. So, you know, Wells is coming in this vacated space. All right, so Henderson coming inside. There's the corners going to come inside with Henderson. So that opens up all that space outside there. That opens up that space for Wells. Really good throw right here. Great catch and toe tap by Wells for a first down. All right, so... Four men to a side. So what do you get here? Tennessee's actually somewhat even on, on this right now. If you split it down the center, you take out the three on three at the top. Tennessee's four and four to the side, but Florida's going to get an advantage here by reading this guy. And here's the bluff we talked about a little earlier. Right here. Instead of blocking him, I'm going to bluff him. So I'm going to lead him. We're going to read him. So he jumps inside. Thank you very much. Now he's there for the corner, and you're one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Well designed, and that's what that four to side can give you, especially after you've run. So we've seen him ISO here. We've seen in the past he'll kick. Now we see him bluff, go inside. Thank you very much. You got him. Easy, easy run. And then you'll see the same design here on the big run later from Florida. Again, right here, you got formation into the boundary, something Florida loved to do last week against Alabama. What's that get you? It gets you a one-on-one -on -one out here. Now, you see the corner's already rolled back. The corner's playing off. So you think maybe a deep shot's probably out here. So is Emory going to force it? He's looking over there, but he doesn't like it. This is great maturation. Just drop it off. It's second and nine. Drop it off to your guy in space. Let him make it an easy third down. USF game, maybe he forces that one deep because he feels like I got to make a big play in the passing game. I got to match what Anthony Richardson's done. Right here, just, just make the right play. He does. Get your guy the ball in space. He makes the guy miss. 
And now instead of second and nine or third and nine, we get third and three, third and four, very much shorter. Um, again, under center, we're trying to match what Embry does well. We're trying to call plays for him, right? Red zone, you're probably going to get man coverage. So he's probably manned up right here. He's going to run kind of a corner. He's got eyes on him. He's going to block. And then you're going to sneak Wells along the back there. If he's got him man, which he kind of does, it's tough. And then with its toss fake, he kind of carries it out. You see you get some play to the toss, and Wells is just able to sneak out right here. Right there, it's over. He's running with him. He stepped down inside with the fake and seeing him block. And now Wells is them outflanked. It's just a race now, and he's got a head start. Drop it to him. Easy money for a touchdown. And really good job by Emery, right, throwing on the run. That's something he's really good at. Accentuate those strengths. Let him throw on the run. All right, come right back to it. Florida's got four to a side down here. Last time Tennessee was pretty even, right? We had a corner out here. There's no corner out there now. Now to the right of the center, you got three guys. Everybody else is to the left. So what are we going to do? We're going to bring him around. Bluff. Good job right here by the right tackle. Right? Doesn't chase him. Knows this guy's going to come back to me. Thank you very much. And now you got a lead blocker here. Right? The previous one, there was a corner. Right now. There's no corner out here. This is it. There's nobody else outside. I'm reading this guy. If I can reach him, get to him on the second level, there's nobody outside there. He jumps inside here with the bluff. He's out of the play. He's a lead blocker for who has ever left. And now you get a really big run here by Emory Jones. And that's really just putting those four guys to one side and making Tennessee overload it, right? How are you gonna how are you gonna play this? Four to a side. You gotta kinda if you don't match numbers, we could throw the ball out here. We could speed option out here. We can do a lot of stuff. But now once you overload it, well, we can bring a lot of stuff back too. So uh, kind of a misalignment here by Tennessee, but great job taking advantage of it by Florida. Right here, it uh, looks like a wide zone again for Damian Pierce. This, I think this is Ethan White right there. So it looks like we're kind of folding this on the backside there. He's going to cut, and then tackle's going to fold inside here. Pierce takes this thing wide, right? Outside zone, you're kind of taking it wide until, until I can't and got to get vertical. He makes a great move there in space. This Florida offense has done a really good job with this wide zone this year. And it's something that's really difficult to take care of. I think you're going to see a lot of it from Kentucky this week. Uh, the Rams are really notorious for running that wide zone. Kind of off that Shanahan, McVay system, right? And and their offensive the coordinator was the quarterback's coach with the Rams last year, I believe. So you'll see a ton of wide zone. And it really helps with play action and stuff like that, too. So you'll probably see a good dose of this from Kentucky this week before it has gotten really good at running it. And then here, 12 personnel. Looks like you're running power here. Inside the red zone. You're, good job by Keon Zipperer here. This, I mean, he's turned himself. I don't, I didn't know he was going to be this good of a blocker when, when Florida signed him out of high school. This is a pretty good job right here, taking on a defensive end. You kind of get a little bit of a slant here across face. So we're down blocking. He slants across. Ethan White takes him. Zipperer does a great job with this end kind of by himself that allows this tackle to get to the second level here watch zipper there zipper kind of overtakes this thing and now you let garage get to the second level All right zipper is there gamble garage and good read here by malik davis and then way to finish the run there for the final points and for some people more importantly the cover so good job up front by Florida. Um, and, I, I, you know, I thought th this was not a game with a ton of crazy new stuff from Florida. 
it was a more out and go execute your base stuff, get ready for a tough road game coming up this week. I think that was more of their emphasis. So good job by them doing that. And I think you're going to see maybe some more new stuff this week as they take on Kentucky. But good job by Florida. Good plan and good execution of the plan they played against Tennessee. 